Hello, welcome to Cosmic Doll Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. Today, we're playing Sonalus Combat Systems Fleet Command, an operational level naval combat simulator. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to show your support with a donation, the links are in the description. In this campaign, Oil and Water, we look at a series of fictional naval operations undertaken by America and its allies in the Middle East in the alternate 1990s world of Fleet Command. In this scenario, Palestinian peace, the US maintains a naval presence in the Eastern Mediterranean to enforce the latest Middle East peace accords. Radical forces on both sides are trying to undermine the fragile peace. Their training camps are the target. Mission tasking. Number one, conduct continuous surveillance and maintain a continuous strike posture. Agency personnel on the ground in the disputed areas are attempting to pinpoint the training camps for the radical forces on both sides, trying to undermine the peace. Number two, surgical strikes on those training locations may be required on short notice. Keep missile shooters aircraft ready for strike missions. This is the area of operations in the Eastern Mediterranean. It is 0800 hours on a sunny day with light high altitude cirrus clouds. To the north is Turkey, a NATO ally. Moving down the coast is Syria, Lebanon, the island of Cyprus. To the south is Egypt, the Sinai Peninsula, the Suez Canal linking the Mediterranean to the Red Sea, and Israel and the Palestinian territories. Let's examine friendly forces. To the north, looking under the waves, is the USS Columbia SSN 771. Operated by the United States as a Los Angeles class 688 improved nuclear powered submarine, she is 351 feet in length with a beam of 51 feet, maximum speed of 32 knots and maximum depth of 1,473 feet. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, low frequency passive sonar, surface ESM, visual and ship surface radar short range. She carries 26 Mark 48 ADCAP torpedoes, 6 Tomahawk land attack missiles and 6 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles. and the USS Greenville, SSN 772, also a Los Angeles-class nuclear-powered submarine. And the USS Cheyenne, SSN 773, also a Los Angeles-class submarine. Maintaining Overwatch is an E-2 Hawkeye. Operated by the United States as an airborne early warning aircraft, the E-2 Hawkeye has a maximum speed of 338 knots, maximum altitude of 37,000 feet, and a range of 1,500 nautical miles. Sensors include aircraft visual, aircraft early warning radar long range, and aircraft ESM long range. The Hawkeye is unarmed and vulnerable. Pride of the fleet is the USS Ronald Reagan, CVN-76. Operated by the United States as a Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, she is 1,020 feet in length with a beam of 235 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, fire control radar and active intercept. She carries 24 enhanced Sea Sparrow missile surface to missiles and cannon. Nimitz has two Tomcats and two Hornets at the catapults. Call signs Sundown and Cougar in the Tomcats and Yale and Omaha in the Hornets. Reagan's air group consists of one squadron of 12 F-14 Tomcats capable of anti-surface warfare and anti-air warfare missions. Two squadrons totaling 20 FA-18 Hornets, capable of anti-surface warfare, anti-air warfare and strike missions. 
four SH-60F Seahawk helicopters capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare missions, four EA-6B Prowlers capable of anti-surface warfare and strike missions, three E-2 Hawkeye, one already airborne, one squadron of 10 S3 Vikings, capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare missions. And two ES3 Vikings, electronic warfare aircraft. In company with the Ronald Reagan to port front is the USS Halliburton, FFG-40. Operated by the United States as an Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate, she is 409 feet in length with a beam of 48 feet and maximum speed of 29 knots. Sensors include high frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries 36 standard missile 1 surface to air missiles, 14 harpoon missiles, 8 Mark 46 torpedoes, four Mark 50 torpedoes, guns, and cannon. Also in company to starboard front is the USS Stout DDG-55. Operated by the United States as an Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer, she is 460 feet in length with a beam of 57 feet and maximum speed of 32 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar long range, ship surface radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries 68 SM-2 surface to air missiles, 6 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles, 10 Tomahawk land attack missiles, 8 harpoons, 8 Mark 46 torpedoes, 4 Mark 50 torpedoes, guns, and cannon. Directly to starboard is the USS Valley Forge CG-50. Operated by the United States as a Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser, she is 531 feet in length with a beam of 56 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar long range, ship surface radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries 68 SM-2 surface-to-air missiles, 8 Harpoon missiles, 8 Mark 46 torpedoes, 4 Mark 50 torpedoes, guns, and cannon. This is not the vertical launch system class with the Tomahawk missiles. To starboard rear is the USS McCluskey, FFG-41. Another Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate. To Port Rear is the USS John Paul Jones DDG-53, another Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer. And directly to port is the USS Vincennes CG-49, another Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser. Some ground contacts, but no hostiles. Let's start the mission. Hornets reach the flight deck of the Ronald Reagan. and move to the catapult. As do the Tomcats. All three submarines are ordered to remain at comms depth. Green deck, launch aircraft. Resume. 
Ronald Reagan's Airbus orders Sundown and Cougar in the Tomcats to launch. New intelligence message received. The agency has identified three locations that are in use by radical forces opposed to the latest Middle East peace agreements. The camps are both command posts and training compounds for new recruits. The camps are operated by radical Israeli and Palestinian groups and all pose a major threat to the peace process. One camp is in the Negev Desert in southern Israel, vicinity 3030 north, 3440 east. One is near Nablus in the occupied territories, vicinity 3214 north, 3515 east. And one is near Tibnon in southern Lebanon, vicinity 336 north, 3515 east. Let's mark these on the map. First, the Negev Desert Camp. Next, the Nablus camp. Finally, the Tibnon camp. High priority intelligence message received. USS Columbia reports communications intercepts bearing 169 degrees true from her position that relate to planned attacks in the next 24 hours. Let's plot that bearing. One hundred and sixty nine degrees. Probably the Tibnon camp. New tasking message received. The Tomcats launch. Yale and Omaha in the Hornets are ordered to launch. Two Prowlers are ordered to launch and two on Alert 5. New tasking message received. Launch reconnaissance aircraft to monitor the three locations identified by the agency. If possible, pinpoint the locations of the camps. On it. Roger out. High priority intelligence message received. High priority intelligence message received. USS Greenville reports intercepting communications on a bearing of 143 degrees true from her position. The source of the communications was discussing plans for a coordinated attack in a major city. The attack will occur very soon. Let's plot that bearing. One four three degrees. Probably the Nablus camp. High 
Priority intelligence message received. High priority intelligence message received. USS Cheyenne intercepted communications from a group planning to take part in an attack in Jerusalem. The radio transmission originated on a bearing of 165 degrees true from Cheyenne. Let's plot that bearing. One six five degrees. Probably the Negev camp. The intelligence picture is starting to build. Back to the Reagan's flight deck. The Hornets launch. The Hornets are vectored towards the Negev camp. High priority tasking received. High priority tasking message received. After high level talks with Middle East and NATO leaders, the President has authorised tomahawk strikes on the three camps. Short time of flight is desired to maintain the element of surprise. This points us to the submarines, which are closer platforms than the surface vessels. Let's speed up time while the assets get into position. Updated tasking message received. Updated tasking message received. The Agency and National Command Authority need battle damage assessments of the camps. Send aircraft to determine if targets have been destroyed. So, we will need overflights. This will expose pilots and airframes to additional risk. The Tomcats move east to screen the fleet. Two prowlers reach the flight deck of the Reagan. These aircraft will conduct reconnaissance to locate the camps. They will also use electronic jamming to suppress enemy air defences. And, if they have fuel remaining, they will contribute to the battle damage assessments. The Prowlers launch. Another two Prowlers are ordered to launch. And two ES-3 Vikings are ordered to launch. Roger. 
One prowler is directed towards the Tibnon camp. The other towards the Nablus camp. The Hornets continue towards the Negev camp. They are configured for air-to-air -air warfare, so no engaging ground targets. A civilian Airbus A300 flies through the area of operations. Its course will take it over the carrier battle group. Two more prowlers reach the flight deck. The Hornets approach the coast. And our feet dry at 387 knots over the Sinai Peninsula. The second pair of prowlers have launched. And are directed towards Nablus. And Negev. The Hornets have located more ground installations near the suspected location of the camp. Picked up by ESM, so possible radar emitters. The Hornets now play a dangerous game called Wild Weasel identifying ground targets without becoming an aerial target. Sam launch. SA6 Sam. another surface to missile, and a third ground installation. One missile goes astray. This will be tight.
Thankfully, both missiles evaded. It would be a long walk home. But this tells us the occupants of these camps have sophisticated air defence capability, equivalent to a nation state. And the SA-6 is Soviet in origin. They are not gathering for a picnic. The prowlers are also tasked to identify ground contacts. ID track one nine eight five can do Roger out. Yale, the lead Hornet, activates aircraft radar. This could be a double-edged sword. Another SAM launch and the Hornets move to evade. The Hornet climbs, chased by the surface-to-air missile, then dives. It outmaneuvers the missile. Two air contacts. One is likely a missile. Will do. Roger. Out. Affirmative. Roger. Enough nonsense. The USS Cheyenne spills up the tomahawks and targets the SAM site. An aircraft launch. Is it an airport or an airbase? The prowler moves to investigate. Covered by the Tomcats. The Tomcats identify the aircraft as neutral air, probably indicating a neutral airport. The Tomcats move to the suspected airport and the Prowler moves northeast in search of tougher prey. The northern prowler jams the southern ground contact around Tibnon. The red dot indicates it is being jammed, meaning it is probably a radar emitter. Identify track 
track. One, nine, eight, five, out. But not confirmed hostile. Emergency emitter bearing. Affirmative. Will do. Out. Sam launch. That will do it. Prowler evades, but that was close. Roger. We'll do. Roger. Out. Another SAM launch. Another hostile ground target in the Degev. Another SAM site. Another near miss on the Prowler near Tibnon. And another near miss on the prowler near Nablus. The prowler responds with an AGM-88 high-speed anti-radiation missile. Another SAM launch. The harm collides with terrain. Another near miss with an SA-6 SAM. The Prowler launches another high-speed anti-radiation missile and a SAM counter-launch. The harm closes the SAM launch site. Hit and destroyed. The Prowler immediately turns in to identify another ground contact. White knuckle stuff. To the north, the Prowler targets the confirmed SAM site near Tibnon. The harm launch provokes a SAM counter launch. The SAM misses. The harm does not. A column of smoke rises in the hills of Lebanon. A second confirmed hostile SAM battery destroyed. 
a factory building at the camp coordinates. The prowler now moves to identify the third contact. Confirm SAM site. The prowler launches a harm. The SAM site counter launches. And intercepts the harm. The prowler has one last remaining harm. but is dangerously low on fuel and returns to base. To base. This is a good time to pause the action for now and come back to the operation in the next episode. In this episode, after consultations with the relevant countries, the President agreed to tomahawk strikes on three camps operated by radicals opposed to the Palestinian peace process. The Ronald Reagan Carrier Battle Group launched aircraft to locate the camps and in the process destroyed two hostile SAM sites and located three more. In the next episode, the aircraft must complete their reconnaissance so the submarines can launch Tomahawk missile strikes to destroy the camps and bring peace to the troubled region. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.